questions for both members of the committee? Seeing none, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Uh, Saul Silverstein, to be followed by Marlene Silverstein. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Energy and Technology Committee. My name is Saul Silverstein. I'm a resident of Orange. I'm the chairman of the Orange Government Access Television Committee, or OGAT. We are the governing body for the Orange Government Access Television Channel, and we support the intent of House Bill 5297. Our committee and our viewers are very concerned that the existence of OGAT as a town-specific government access television station has been threatened by the actions of the DPUC in its recent decision to award Soundview Community Media with an 11-year franchise as the community access provider or CAP for Area 2. Area 2 comprises the municipalities of Bridgeport, Fairfield, Stratford, Milford, Orange, and Woodbridge. These are communities of vastly different sizes, largely different needs, and very different interests, and they are located in two different counties. The primary goal of OGAT is to make local government more accessible and more understandable to the residents of Orange. We strive to help our viewers understand how local government operates, how the activities of town government affect the community, to inform the residents of the available town services and how to better utilize them, and above all, above all, to maintain transparency in government. We do this through the production and distribution of programming, which covers a wide range of government meetings and events, many of them shown live, along with continuously running scroll of information at the bottom of the screen. OGAT is entirely funded by the taxpayers of Orange. Since its beginnings in 1998, the town of Orange has appropriated over $350,000 to OGAT. Our first recorded program was on January 11, 1999, less than a month after our committee's first meeting. On August 13, 1999, we started cable casting directly from Orange Town Hall and became a 24 by 7 operation. This was three months before Soundview Community Media even opened for business. During most of our fiscal, our most recent fiscal years, the OGAT station has cable cast about 190 programs annually. And we have shown regional programs as a benefit to do so. The station has also been used by our municipal officials to provide vital health and safety information to our residents. For example, several years ago when the West Nile virus was discovered in Connecticut, our first selectman went on the OGAT channel to make sure the residents were aware of the facts and risks and what the town was doing to mitigate those risks. The OGAT channel's ability to rapidly provide emergency response health and safety information is put at risk by area-wide cable cast model being thrust upon us by DPUC. When we informed the people of Orange that our town-specific cable cast status was being threatened by DPUC refranchising, the response was one of overwhelming support for maintaining the status quo from both town officials and from our residents. It is the opinion of the overwhelming majority of the 4,600 Cablevision subscribers in Orange that the OGAT channel should continue to be a town-specific station. I say this with great certainty as a result of the petition letter we circulated in support of the town-specific position. Our goal was to get 1,000 letters signed. We got 1,200 in just two days and stopped seeking more. At the June 6 DPUC public hearing in Milford, we presented those petitions, and many town officials of both major political parties spoke in favor of town-specific broadcasting. Saul, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, again, I think that it's going to be very interesting to see what, if anything, the DPUC does, and whether we need to act in advance of that or let that play out, and then, if necessary, address it after the fact. But I think that uh, you've spoken pretty clearly about your need for... Uh, local public access, and again, as somebody who enjoys it myself, I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Thank so, you for your time. Thank you. And are there other questions for Saul from members of the committee? Seeing none, thank you, Saul. And we'll proceed now to Marlene Silverstein. And I'm going to absent myself temporarily. Good afternoon, and yes, this is a family affair. That was my husband you just heard. My name is Marlene Silverstein, and I represent the Area 2 Cable Advisory Council as a representative from Orange and as chair of the council's GATA subcommittee, which is the Government Access Television Alliance subcommittee, which was created to assist those towns wishing to become and or remain town-specific to do so. Both CAC and GATA support the intent of House Bill 5297. I would like to make one thing clear before I continue. There has been some misapprehension here. The DPUC has ruled and has finalized its decision and taken away the choice of town-specific from the towns and given it to uh, Soundview Community Media. 
Um, I'm here today because we're very concerned that the DPUC, by forcing a third party provider onto Area 2, has called, caused irreparable harm to a town's ability to choose whether it will support town specific or regional access for its government and educational programming. This has been done under DPUC docket 050409 with the granting of an 11 year renewal to Soundview Community Media Inc. as third party provider for Area 2, despite the overwhelming testimony uh, that was given at the DPUC hearings. It is interesting that concurrent with the refranchising of Area 2, the DPUC held refranchising for Area 9 as well. Soundview spent $50,000 of Area 2 money trying to become the third party cap for Area 9. Officials of Area 9 were also strongly against having a third party cap, as they have been on there for many years. Seems that stating that, quote, in making this ruling, the department places considerable weight on Connecticut General Statute Section 16-331AC1, which requires the department to consider the recommendations of the Advisory Council and the municipalities in the franchise in determining if a community-based nonprofit or the cable operator should be assigned the responsibility for community access operations, unquote. The DPUC noted that Soundview had strained relations with the communities of Area 2 and wanted those relations improved. It also noted that none of the 10 communities of Area 9 supported Soundview's application and DPUC did not believe community access could thrive in Area 9 if none of the communities or the Cable Advisory Council supported it. This is unbelievable and hypocritical. The DPU See, listened to the Cable Advisory Council and municipalities of Area 9, but ignored the same advice and same testimony from Area 2. Soundview did a poor job in Area 2, and it gets to continue as the cap. It gets rewarded for its mediocrity. If Soundview had done its job properly, it would have trained people and helped the towns establish their governmental access channels and cut them loose to be town specific if they so chose. Instead, Soundview focused on, excuse me, on public access and the only real development of government access in Area 2 was led by OGAT. Our coordinator uh, went to each town and offered his assistance in helping them establish their government stations. The OGAT station coordinator approached all the leaders and helped Milford and Woodbridge get on the air. Now Orange gets to lose its status as a town town specific channel, even though the Soundview was given was getting subscriber funding to do this. Orange did it on its own with taxpayer dollars. Miss Silverstein, could you summarize your testimony, please? Yes, I'm um, actually I'm finished. We basically we are asking you to correct this le by legislative action because the DPUC has already made its ruling and we would like choice left up to the towns to decide how they would like to disseminate their governmental and educational programming. Thank you very much for your testimony. Any questions of Ms. Silverstein? Thank you. Okay. Pua Ford. If I could just say for those of you still waiting